Um, it is lovely to be here. We are representing the, the four of us. Um, so I'm, yeah, James Parker. I'm uh, one of the leadership fellows. And I'm Louise Price, also one of the leadership fellows. Um, and we're both um, representing um, the West Midlands part, because obviously there are two other um, leadership fellows um, that are representing East Midlands. I think, I think in your recruitment process, you were quite strategic in that Absolutely. we've got West Side and East Side <laughs> represented. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, so myself, I work in an acute trust, uh, physical health focused, um, but we also serve the community. So uh, I have an interest in cancer and palliative care, um, but also do a bit of everything that comes our way, basically. Do you want to say a bit about your... Yeah, and very similarly working in physical health. Um, I, I trust lead for um, uh, acute hospital in Coventry um, and George Elliott as well. Um, and I think we'll, we'll go on to tell you a little bit more about what the need was, but I think there was a, a deliberate focus on physical health, you know, to help with some of the um, wider agenda um, uh, concerns around how to broaden and expand psychological professions in physical mm -hmm. health care. So Claire um, comes from Nottingham and she works in um, the kind of broad trust there and, and part of her remit is physical health, but she has the, the kind of overview. And then um, Anita very much works in kind of um, peri, or well, not perinatal, but paediatric, yeah. the <laughs> kind of neo, <laughs> neonatal, and that's been oh, yeah. her baby, pardon that awful <laughs> pun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a proper dad joke, isn't it? Um, so we've all brought different kind of expertise and, and experience to the table, and I think that, that's that been kind of really, really helpful for us. And we'll, we'll come on to what, what our remit is, but I think um, having that geographical spread has, has been really helpful, and having that kind of spread of expertise has, has been useful. Um, okay. Um, I think um, Sonny mentioned a, a couple of the main reasons why um, leadership fellows were developed, um, but from, from our point of view it was about thinking about um, one of the elements of the vision is about making all care a slight more psychological and the focus being on physical health because that was a part of the, um, the kind of planning that we thought wasn't as um, well developed as we'd like it to be. Um, and focusing on those workforce issues, um, how do we look to expand those roles? Um, and having the leadership fellows looking at that for, um, for across the Midlands um, and how that lack of focus in physical health was part of that, again, led us to um, uh, be selected, I'm sure, because of the physical health connections that we have. Um, and um, how we develop those links between the different services across the patch too, because I think, you know, Professionally, we link up in different kinds of networks, but um, they're often psychology-focused networks rather than the broader psychological professions. So really thinking about our own views about our own services and where we work and how um, being affiliated to the PPN helped us broaden our own views um, as well. Um, so that was a big part of that. I and think, I think it's also fair to say we didn't quite know what the roles were no. and, and what they were going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I thought, this looks really interesting, Probably but I'm not quite sure what it is. Be, but yes. um, and so I kind of went in slightly, slightly naively, kind of going, ah, oh, this will be great. And it has been great, but it wasn't in great in the way I anticipated. And I think it has revealed itself over time. So I think we've we've been kind of trailblazers in a way, kind of, you know, t testing the ground, and I think it's a great model. It's proving. Yeah. And, and I think it was having the dedicated time and the funding that it allowed um, within our kind of work roles. The the additional time that I've provided um, um, to the fellow bit has been in addition to my other hours, so it's not sort of taken any time away from what I've already been doing because I only work part time anyway. Um, so from that point of view, it was kind of building on that and and, and adding in that additional time to kind of think about the, the broader leadership things, but also thinking about um, leadership, relevant, uh, leadership development for myself. Um, so yeah, that was a, a great opportunity that, that that provided to do that bit. I think in, a, in busy clinical roles, it's really tricky to kind of go beyond your, your perceived remit and, and reach because how do you justify that? And I think this for me anyway, gave me a real uh, permission to kind of actually do what I really love, which is like reaching out and connecting with people across the patch and kind of go, what do you do and how, how do you do that? And oh, that's different to me and how do you... And it was a real kind of cross fertilization I think, of, of mm -hmm. sharing information and um, 
as I say, just something I don't always have, have time to do beyond my, my close geographical kind of network. And yeah. And I think the, the, the desire to raise that visibility um, has been a key part. And it feels like that was an extension of what I was already doing, but it kind of gave mm. a little bit more legit I can't speak, legitimacy <laughs> to that um, and the time to dedicate to that too. So that was great. I think it, it also feels like we have like added numbers to, to the, the kind of PPN Midlands workforce. We've kind of suddenly kind of bolstered the, the team and... Um, Give, I think it gives the PPN more visibility when you've got, you know, us four leadership fellows out and about kind of um, communicating and linking in with people. So, yeah. So that was, yeah, really the, the need and the context, kind of how these roles um, kind of came about. Um, so what we have achieved. Um, We've been enrolled since January 20. Well, last year. Yeah, this year? This year. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Feels right. like it's been really? that long. <laughs> <No>. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, nine months, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And so we, we have been divvied up and, and we've taken um, ICBs kind of piece by piece. So, um, as Sonny will have articulated, there are lots of ICBs in the Midlands, you'll be aware of. Um, and so we, we divide and conquered. Um, and so... Louise and I have kind of partnered up to, to meet some ICBs and I've taken some, you've taken some, same with um, Claire and Anita. And I think um, that's given us that ability to take an overview, get a broad sense, because I don't know how Sunny and the PPN keeps track of all of those different services. Like we're just looking at Maturing, physical yeah, health yeah. and, you know, it, it's huge. There's, uh, you know, there's plenty for us four to get our heads around. So how you do the whole whole mental health side as well is beyond me but um so we've we've kind of reached out made connections with with various kind of um leads across across the kind of physical health services um i think we've we've also kind of linked in with um health education england or i've i've noticed i've i've put that wrong it's workforce um training in education not transformation in education but yeah wt and e um and and that's been useful i think just um, understanding what their remit is and you'll have heard me earlier on in the day kind of banging the drum for physical health because I feel like we, we, we're missing out a little bit on some of the action and I want to get in there um, so making those links and being able to give a voice to some of the physical health um, departments in our, our region has been really um, really key and I will keep doing that just for everyone's information um, I think what one of the um, really um, nice parts of, of meeting with other service leads is finding out what's happening in other areas, um, find out, finding out how they're developing the physical health side of things. Um, and it's not there to kind of um, influence and, and, and make you do something that you're not already doing, but it's, it's about um, how ch that, that kind of challenge of, well, if you're not doing that, well, why aren't you doing that? Um, in the nicest possible way. <laughs> um, and, and, and also being able to say, well, actually, we've heard about this over there, and yeah. being able to say, these are really good ways that, that um, uh, the inroads have been made within the ICSs and, and um, how to learn from one another. And kind of being that conduit, because mm. you know, there's not always um, time or space to be able to have those conversations. Um, so yeah, you know, it being a bit of a source of information intelligence as well. As, yeah, it, it does feel like it's been, there's been some healthy cross-fertilization. You know, it's not just us dictating what, what's going on. It's kind of hearing and understanding and learning from from everybody and, and sharing where appropriate. Um, yeah, and uh, we've done a fair bit of head scratching as a team and, and we've certainly we kind of sat around thinking, well, you know, we know there are workforce issues in, in physical health. We know that um, there's a big need and a growing need. How are, we going to, how are we going to do that? And I think there are lots of different models or, or formats which, which we could potentially pursue. Um, and I think we've, we've kind of gone with um, one as a kind of, well, let's trial this. Let's just see if this has got legs. It's the CAPS kind of role. It's been trialed in mental health. It seems to have um, landed quite well. And I, I guess our sense is that there's kind of utility in this model in a physical health setting. It, not maybe every niche of, of physical health, mm -hmm. but certainly some of them. Um, and so in that vein, if that's the, the kind of model we're going to pilot, we're like, well, let's find out a bit more. Let's speak to some of the um, education providers, find out what, what they're offering currently. And you heard earlier there's some 
older adult models or um, you can go through the kind of child route or adult route. And we're there thinking, well, what about physical health? And we thought, well, maybe actually what we could do is tailor, tailor the content and actually have a, a purely physical health um, pathway through the CAPS kind of training. And then we kind of come back going, well, actually that does make it very niche and perhaps wouldn't appeal to everybody. Um, it also presents challenges for those <laughs> CAPS courses because they want numbers. They're, you know, they, they have to have money to, to run them. And actually, the numbers we're talking about are relatively few um, in comparison to, say, adult or older adult. So. And I suppose um, we've had a couple of examples today already in where they've worked really well, but actually there's only a few of those directly in physical health yeah. at the moment. And so one of the conversations that we were having across the patch um, uh, with the, with the kind of CPPO conversations we've been having was, okay, well, in your area, what might the barriers be to doing that? How might we um, support any um, conversations with your teams about that? Um, strategies where it's worked really well um, and, and just how to um, collate that, that evidence so that we could feed that back to the courses and feed that back to the wider PPN about actually some of these barriers are, 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 are real difficult yeah. challenges that we can't easily overcome. Um, but, you bring yeah. us on beautifully Sorry, yes. to the next Fabulous. slide. <laughs> um, I th but there's something about, like, as psychologists, we're, we, know, we know what assistants do and we know what ATAs do and we we kind of have a sense of maybe what IAPT or Talking Therapies does. And, and I think we, we can get a little bit anxious or cautious about 22 professions, what, what do they all do? And, and we don't know. And I think, um, you know, that's the challenge. And we've had, we've had some healthy like, pushback from people saying, well, how do we know caps won't disappear? And, um, you know. Where's the fun going to come from? Yeah. We, well, <laughs> it's yeah, a big, a big, it's a big, a big question. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think this slide is about the challenges um, that we found as leadership fellows um, and identifying the key members um, within the ICBs um, in terms of how you think about workforce planning and, and how easily it is to link in with really busy CPPRs and um, the multiple other forums that these conversations might be happening. So how do we add in value um, in terms of um, the PPN leadership fellow roles? Um, and how that the role of the PPN generally um, fits in with the other forums that, that people are meeting. So there's mental health provider collaboratives and the, the, the clinical specialist groups that, that meet um, and what kinds of ways might um, the PPN connect better um, and, and, and how can leadership fellows help that happen? Mm. I think we're, you know, we're aware clinicians are busy, CPPOs are super busy and we're all meeting now, and, and so what, what we wanted to understand is kind of, yeah, how do we bring something extra, something of value to, to, to the party? And um, I, think, I think what I've seen is just the close links that the PPN has with um, Health Education in England, WT, E and I, um, and actually what that can bring. I think, you know, we've been involved in some of the shortlisting for kind of placements for neuropsychology training and some of the of access for assistance and it's been i think that's been really valuable just to understand that and i think um yeah there are lots of lots of organizations and lots of meetings that we could get involved in but i think you know the, the ppn and, and the links with health education england wte and i um yeah are good um i think in terms of the CAP syllabus, I think that was one of the questions that we'd had when we were focusing on, is it worth developing a, a physical health specific CAP course? And I think one of the previous um, presentations talked about that as a potential future option. Um, actually, we didn't find a lot of positive views about that, more so um, because um, we, we also spoke to assistants who, and, and, and the kind of experience of, would you be interested in these type of roles? What kind of um, issues might they be? Um, and I think it was the mobility, and obviously I know we're talking about potentially growing people um, within local services to work in local services <coughs> with the view that they'll never move on and never go anywhere else, but actually people do like to be able to have the choice of moving around. Um, and if we develop a physical health 
health, specific only cat course, then they'll only ever be able to work in physical health. Whereas if it's an adult course with additional physical health modules, and I think some of the courses have um, work streams or pathways or different modules that are available, um, that we could incorporate some of the physical health stuff into that. Um, and I think one of the other ones was mentioning about older adult versus adult with some additional bits added on. And I think there's a lot of value in that for physical health, mm -hmm. um, considering we're looking about how we adapt those models, so the theory that's taught on the course, and then the placement um, experience and talking um, about how we develop the understanding about how those models get adapted wherever we work mm. in, because actually we're tailoring that training and experience yeah. to the service and the individual, um, which I don't think the courses will ever be able to provide that. So yeah. I think we've got to be practical about um, what we can expect from CAP courses, um, because there's so much variety in which we could potentially use caps that I don't think it's reasonable at this point in time. Whether that will change yeah, in the I, you future, know, I'm not sure. I mean, you ran a master's. I imagine even trying to cover all of the physical yeah. health stuff in a master's programme is going to be tight, and you've probably got a year full-on teaching to do that. So to, to kind of develop a CAPS course that covers everything in physical health is a big ask. I mean, it's a broad church. So um, I think a lot of that learning, you know, chatting to the courses, and I'm sure other people will corroborate this but a lot of the learning happens on the job and, and that's wonderful because you can really shape um, shape the kind of role and, and the teaching and the learning for that person um, well that kind of brings us on you know we looked at some of the challenges for for us as individuals but some of the wider um, challenges you know as I was saying earlier you know we had some healthy debates when when talking to people you know people saying like what yeah where do we get the funding and I think um, you know, some of the discussions we've had are around, you know, do we scrap all these 8A posts we can't fill and use that money for CAPS roles? And, and a real anxiety about where, where will that leave us in a couple of years when all these, you know, newly qualified suddenly come out into the world and are ready to, to kind of hit the job market. We, we still want them to have jobs. Yeah. Um, so we don't want to kind of, I guess, rob Peter to pay Paul now and then regret it. So, um, you know, I think... I think there's a sense of like there's, there's enough work for all of us getting the funding is an issue so like do we use assistant funding for this because uh, one of the questions earlier was around you know what's the difference between an assistant and and a cap and, and for me it's it's the payback you get with a cap i think you know an assistant you might put all that energy and in, um, investment into in terms of time and training and then they do really well and they get on the course and you're really happy for them and you give them a cake and but then you're like, oh, back to square one, <laughs> you know, <laughs> here we go. Um, but a cap, you know, my sense is they, they have 18 months where they're, you know, in-house being trained up and then you've got them for two years. Like the, there's payback, you, the, you, the kind of cost benefit analysis begins to kind of work in our favour. And, and I guess the hope is longer term, they, they might stay even more than two years. And I think where we've had conversations about developing cap roles um, within physical health services, it's about making sure that they're in existing services. So if you want them working in pain, it's there's, there's established um, clinical roles already in that service. So the caps are, are positioned in a governed structure, so they're not... Um, existing in, in isolation, which is, is what we absolutely don't want. And obviously the experience from the CAPS um, so far is that it's working alongside and being an apprentice with a more um, experienced clinician is an essential part of that. So we can't possibly do it any other way. Um, so it's, it's about looking to see well where we want to expand services. CAPS might be a way of doing that. Um, and it might be a way of expanding the psychological um, interventions that your service is able to offer without always asking for senior clinicians. So when you're talking about potentially expanding um, roles and having conversations with commissioners, they might be a little bit more inclined to listen if you're talking about skill mix and, and different levels um, uh, and how you might mm -hmm. um, develop services with that in mind. Um, so yeah, I think that's a big part of it. With my, um, my cancer hat on, I've been kind of screwing away trying to trying to get funding from ICBs for, for kind of cancer roles and um, our Coventry and Warwickshire ICB have um, kind of pump primed us really they, they've funded um, an 18 month 8A post but they also funded 18 months of a cap role now I wasn't quite ready for them to give me that funding I was like oh that's sooner than I expected so I haven't you know got the job description matched and um, 
got everything in place and we haven't kind of formalized you know which courses we're going to go with so I've ended up saying that's really kind of you but I'm going to use that for another role for now but actually that tells me that there is mileage in this if you've got that conviction and belief as a uh, a department that you can um, sustain and, and it's going host to be a to permanent post. role. Yeah. And, and so some, some services might be saying, oh, we'll have a go with that or we'll trial it. Um, and with assistant roles, often if they're employed on fixed term bases, you can, you can do that and, and, and establish a need. But actually, the, the CAT roles are, um, uh, although they're at an apprenticeship level at a slightly lower banding, once they're qualified, they need to be qualified into a permanent position. So it's the it's the conversations with your organisation about workforce planning and the business cases to say this need the role is needed um, before you then can appoint to apprenticeship apprenticeships. Because I thought, oh that's great, you'll be able to get somebody in and trial it and then have a go and show the need. No, it's got to be the other way around. And I think that's where some of the challenges mm -hmm. come um, with trusts who are a bit less. Um, able to, to hear that message. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. Um, I'm being very diplomatic. It's you know what we're <laughs> suggesting is it's a stepped care model and yeah, like yeah. working in cancer care like that has been around forever. You know we're, we're not wanting them to replace psychologists or replace assistants as we said. It's there's there's plenty enough uh, in space for all for of that. us. Yeah. yeah, I think that's our hope. Um, how each department navigates that with their commissioners or you know per string holders um, is yeah a different matter yeah. and I think where a lot of the initial drive for CAPS came from was in me and mental health so there's no money dedicated for CAP roles to be rolled out in physical health so I think there were those were a lot of questions that we had is well where's the money to do what's happened in mental health yeah. over here um, and we kind of went well um, <laughs> there isn't any um, additional resources what have what have you currently got and how might you look at that differently and that's why those conversations with the Helen Smiths of the world are going to be really important and her cancer and, uh, mm, Natasha. yeah, Natasha, her cancer mm. kind of um, colleague, you know, if we can begin to get them to work collaboratively, um, then yeah, we're, we're on to something. And if we can get them pump priming and funding, you know, some pilots maybe of these caps roles in physical health, that would be a wonderful thing. So yeah, that's okay. what we're working on. What next slide as well. Right, yeah, sorry, we're, we're flowing is what's happening. Um, yeah, so we have some cunning plans, don't we, going forward. I think our sense was, you know, we've got this role for a year, it's not a lot of time, but we want to leave a bit of a legacy. And one of them was um, actually bringing all of the lovely people we've been out there talking to together and having a space where physical health leads across the Midlands can, can meet. So the, there's, there's lots of similar meetings, but nothing quite like that. Mm -hmm. I know there's similar ones for cancer or there's regional ones for this or that, but this would be a Midlands wide place where leaders in whatever physical health specialty um, you're in can come together. <coughs> so it's not just the heads of the departments, but mm -hmm. it might be that you're the paediatric diabetes lead in that trust. But you want to connect and, and so what we wanted to do is bring a community of practice together um, to, to enable us to do that um, get some like-minded folk together who can go oh god our ICB are a nightmare yeah mine too what did what worked in yours don't know you know and begin to kind of share best practice and learning I think it's and, and keeping the the broader psychological professions in mind because I know um, that that's not always the case in those other forums. Um, I think what we've said is where there's willingness to engage with those caps and um, some funding available, um, we'll trial that in a few areas. Obviously, the I think we've set ourselves up, haven't we, is what's happened. Yeah, well, obviously, we've <laughs> kind of gone, well, if we can't yeah. <laughs> decide that it's going to work in our services, then how are we going to convince anybody else? Um, but um, uh, how we're going to then share that learning is going to be an important part of that. Um, and I think we were trying to say, um, what's the learning in terms of the workforce? So how do you employ a CAP? What kinds of ways do you recruit? And obviously Stephanie's um, really kindly agreed to share some of those resources. And so we were like, well, actually that's what yeah. we said we would do is a bit of a how-to guide. So if you do want to go down this route, what do you have to do? How long does it take? Because actually it takes a quite long a long time, time to establish yeah. an apprenticeship. Um, with the feedback that we've had, which we hadn't thought about really, was employing them before the course yes, starts. Yes, that we were was like, good Oh, that's know. a great idea. Um, because we were, we were just thinking about 
um, the timing and the lead up to a course, it's almost like, well, they have to be yeah. in role at the time of the course starting. Well, actually, that sounds like act that, that's not something that um, we'd considered before. And, and how widely is that yeah. known? And, and we can share that. Um, we yeah, we realise we realise actually having a conversation with like the the learning and development leads in our trust to make sure there are apprenticeship levies left is a good starting point because there's no point having a great plan and then oh can we have that levy that will pay for the first eighteen months please oh no we spent it all on nurse training or something and you're like ah so yeah we're we're thinking actually almost a year in advance you need to begin to start the thinking get your job descriptions matched and so on and so forth. I know in my trust that takes about three months. So yeah, um, preparation is everything. And then I think the last point there is um, uh, our conversations across the, the patch again about how we attract people to work in physical health. Obviously there's vacancy, um, concerns in all specialties. Um, but you know, um, as people gain experience in working in these areas, they might be more likely to want to come work with us. So the idea of offering really good placements, um, whatever course they're on, um, you know, we've had um, uh, counselling psychology trainees as well as the usual clinical psychology trainee places. Um, and so we're trying to broaden what we can across areas. So sharing that experience and saying, well, what's worked in your area and how might we learn from that is a, is a key part of what the Leadership Fellows have been able to achieve. Yeah. I like that idea of like WhatsApp groups for yeah you know, yeah. So it's not lots of sharing. more meetings to attend, but how do you have a, a point of sharing some of that practice? Um, and so we'll take that forward as one of our next steps. Mm. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Okay. By accident, I <laughs> would show you we haven't coordinate, colour coordinated with each other or the PPN yeah. logo, but maybe it was subconsciously done, who knows? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now blushing the same colour. It's very new to our role, and um, I think it goes without saying that there's lots of challenges in terms of maximising psychological input in physical health services, but they're a critical mass of psychological professionals, and I've been busily swapping emails across it today. I'm delighted to hear about the uh, community. Already, I think it's fantastic. How do we sign up? Yeah. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> I think in the, in the meantime, direct any queries yes. to our PPN um, email address and you can then put it out to the established group in the in house form. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Really, really quickly, um, is there a way you can um, build in maximising the impact of health psychologists? We were just talking about that yeah. full starters. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, the, there are various models we could run with, but um, that's what we're you know, really interested in. It's kind of on our way down. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Again.